Welcome to another episode. Today, we're taking a little bit of a different turn here. We're actually talking about success and we're talking about failure. Now, the biggest thing here is that we're going to show you how failure has made us grow into the company that we are today. We're going to give you a, a, a story that we've never told before, a story of, of hardship and true failure uh, at the very beginning of our company, and that has shaped us into who we are today. Check it out. This is The Marketing Natives, providing actionable ways to grow, improve, and succeed in your business. And now, your hosts, Christian and Aaron. All right. So guys, this is going to be a little bit different of a podcast episode for us, and hopefully in the future, it will change. This may be an evolution of our podcast. We want to start telling... Um, different stories that we're going to help and resonate with local business owners. And we still are going to give how to tactical tips and advice as well. But I think you guys can learn a lot more from our journey and not making the same mistakes. And this is, um, I, I think a part of the process. So if you guys can follow along with our journey. Um, so success is a horrible teacher for local business owners. And the reason we said that is because most people believe that success breeds success. So, the more success that you have, the more successful you're going to be, which is not necessarily the case. And uh, we wanted to kind of extrapolate or expand on that. Um, and I was just talking to Christian before we recorded about this story. And I think it'll be more fun for you guys to find out more about um, the very beginning of bit branding because those were, uh, as, they, as they say, the good old days or the, the, uh, the days that were kind of stressful um, uh, but really looking back at them, they weren't that, that stressful at all. It was just like a then and now kind of thing. Yeah. And I think the, yeah, the overarching theme here is what you just said, like success doesn't breed success. And that the story that we're about to tell you is a story of, of failure. It's not a story of, um, of success, right? It, it's not, uh, it eventually has a happy ending, right? But we have to go through these trials and tribulations and these failures in order to uh, become successful. Right. Um, and that's that's the whole story um, and theme about this podcast is that we want to make sure that you understand that failure is normal and failure is necessary um, for you to have a successful company. Yes. If you don't have failure, then you're limiting yourself on how much you can grow and how fast you can grow. So I would even advise to seek failure, right? Mm -hmm. And, and seek ways that you can fail so that you can actually grow. Yeah. If you look back at it, and I think that uh, I can't think of any specific examples, but if you ever watch or you see these motivational videos on YouTube or Facebook or anything like that, it's like, uh, this is where, um, you know, Jeff Bezos started. He was in a in a bedroom or like a one room and now he's grown it to this. It's like it all started with something smaller and all these failures. I think it was like Abraham Lincoln. He like barely passed any of his civic classes. He failed to get elected. He failed to do this. And then like, you know, after 50 or 60 tries of all these failures, he became one of the best presidents and united the country. So um, I, I obviously know I butchered that story, but the point is that we all have been through that. It's just, I think that we don't talk about it as much in business. Um, and I was telling, I think I was telling this to you, but I, I heard it on a podcast the other day before we get into this. And that is, uh, like Disney movies would absolutely suck if, you know, there wasn't any problems. Like imagine if Woody and Buzz were best friends from the very beginning and Andy just happened to play with them all day. Like there's nothing with Toy Story or like finding Nemo. What would it be like playing with Nemo? Like there would be no issues or problems for them to overcome. It would just be happy endings. Now there are happy endings, but they wouldn't be good movies. There's no conflict and it makes for a boring life. So we weren't, I guess, born um, in life or in business to just have success all the time. Like the, the rough stories that we have or like the crazy stories or anything like that. Those are the ones we talk about the most. Nobody talks mm -hmm. about like, Oh man, I can't believe it was 70 and sunny. And you know, it was just the perfect day ever. Um, like nobody 
really cares about that, but they do care about like last night here, at least in the Dallas area. I don't know about where Christian's at in Lubbock right now. Um, it was the craziest thunderstorm ever. Like Roy, one of our friends, mutual friends, he was on, um, at like two o'clock in the morning, there's like two or 300 people on. And I wake up and watch Facebook live of him, you know, basically saying there's like hail everywhere, potential tornadoes coming up. Like that's the stuff people are interested in. That's the stuff that people want to talk about and know about. So, um, yeah, so I think it, it all going back to the movies, like it provides a, a chance for the characters again to grow, right? There has to be the most interesting stories or the ones of, of, of failure because the character has to go through uh, these challenges mm. and overcome those challenges. And that's what's relatable to people. That's what's relatable to business owners. That's what's relatable to, to everyone and in, in life. You know, that's mm-hmm. what life is all about. It's about <clears throat> going through, going through failure, overcoming that failure. And that's what makes us relatable. That's mm-hmm. what makes us relatable as, as people, as business owners, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I mean, Woody and, and Buzz, they have to go through that stuff and those character arcs and growth in order for us to, you know, kind of rally behind them and say like, you know, yeah, I've, I've actually been through some of these problems, mm-hmm. um, even though it's a cartoon. Um, there's also this, uh, YouTube channel called yes theory and they're awesome group of guys and they have this motto and it's uh seek discomfort. Mm-hmm. They've actually created a whole line of. Uh, clothing item and things like that but they also advocate for that they advocate for you know at, at the at the point where you're uh inconvenienced or uncomfortable um and the point of failure you know that's where mm-hmm. we we grow that's where we actually push ourselves to to become better um, yeah so if you have a chance to check them out um i would highly recommend watching some of their videos um they're very inspirational um and they definitely make you want to get out of the house and do something. <laughs> right. Well, we'll have to come back to this in, in later episodes because right now we can't talk about it because I feel like I saw a tweet from Christian who said, and you guys can all shame him, find him on Twitter for not watching the last dance. But this is exactly what it's like. I mean, Michael Jordan was so successful that even when he was better than somebody, he made up things in his head that people said to him, it was like, Oh, good game, Michael. Like, so he would get, so he was so competitive in his head. He had to motivate himself because He's at a different level, a way different level, so successful, and he could have rested on his laurels, but um, his laurels rather. Um, but he decided to make up things in his head so that he could motivate himself to to fight adversity whenever he was just having success. He like he lived for like the failure and then overcoming that. So it's just I don't know. Check it out. Obviously, most of you guys need to watch that movie, but or the the series, uh, like Christian. But uh, we want to tell you guys, and now that we've kind of prefaced this a little bit, I want to tell you guys a little bit about our our journey from the very beginning. So to give you guys some context really quickly, Christian and I were working remotely on the, the company when we first started. We were doing everything via Google Docs. But then uh, Christian came down to Dallas and we went to go drive around. We had a couple of really nice deals lined up as far as like, okay, these are potential prospects. We went and met with them. We uh, wrote out a proposal. We were going to talk to them about how we could help them with their marketing and their website and everything. And we had just landed, like we had, I think we got a deposit or we made the most money we've ever made in one day. And I'll tell you guys, it wasn't a lot. I think it was like a couple thousand or two or $3,000. I don't even remember, but it wasn't a lot. I feel like it was like $1,200 or yeah. something. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't a lot, but it was like, we just made this much money in like, I don't know, it was like an hour. We're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So your first sale is absolutely important. We've had, I think that morning we sold a website and then that afternoon we sold a website too because it was like a boutique in Kansas. And then we drove over to, over to Plano to a popcorn shop and uh, closed that website as well. And they both, and they, one of them gave us a check right then and we had that check and we were like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Yeah. I think the the context of that, the fact that we thought that it was so much money it's because of what you just kind of mentioned right there, which is this is the most money we've made in an hour or two, right? right that it took us to to do those transactions, right? Um, so I think that was the the biggest excitement was like, oh my gosh, we've made all this money in just two hours, right? Obviously, we kind of had that all wrong, but we were super <laughs> excited. Moment, in that time and moment, we were it, it's, yeah extremely excited that we've made that much money um, in that little amount of time. Yeah. 
And so then I remember we went to Waters Creek. We talked. I mean, we had like a mojito. We were like, oh, yeah, this is the best thing ever. So we were on cloud nine, um, as many of you guys probably are when you're starting your business and you get your first sale, which is like the most exciting thing ever. You're like, uh, this, I, I could just do this all day. Like as soon as I get my first sale, I'll get my second. It'll just be all easy. Um, so the website was actually pretty easy at the very beginning. We did, we didn't have any process or procedure in place and we were still working remotely. Christian went back to, um, to Oklahoma and we were both working on a platform called Squarespace, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. And we would both be inside of the editor and we would be doing like FaceTime or something like that and working through like how we wanted to design the website. And I'll tell you right now, Christian has a lot more years at this point. He had a lot more years of design and now he definitely does um, experience than I did, but I don't know why I was helping out with the design. It was more of like, you know, we're part of the business. So we're both going to work at this together. Um, and so we, I don't know, maybe you guys never did that, but we were just trying to figure out like our processes and, um, the way that we were doing things. And obviously we were very inefficient. So it's like two guys working on one website and different ideas on what to do and how to do it. And, um, so the, the popcorn shop, it had, products um that were pretty easy christian did that and we realized i think a couple weeks into it right that i'm just not going to mess with the website i'm going to do like the social media part of things and i'll I'll focus on this you do the website and so mm-hmm. i think a couple weeks in we figured out the products and there were no problem you were designing them maybe you can give some context to that but i know that the biggest thing the biggest hurdle um that we ran into was figuring out their tins like trying yes. to create that so Absolutely. The products were super easy. Obviously, you have a certain amount of flavors, and then you have a certain amount of sizes that you have to worry about. Extra small, small, medium, and then the flavors, you have butter popcorn, you have, I don't know, Oreos and caramel and whatever. Anyways, there was about 52 or 60 some different flavors, and obviously each of these have uh, the sizes. That was the easy part. The complicated part was the tins, like Aaron said. The tins, you could have three different sizes. So you had the, I don't know, like the one gallon, 3.5 gallon, and then like a six gallon or something. I feel like you remember it pretty well because I think that's exactly (laughs) what it was. This is incredible in my head. Um, So you had these three sizes of tins. And then uh, each of these tins, you could do one flavor or two or up to three flavors. per. So you could pick... A 3.5 gallon tin, and you could have up to three different flavors. And then, mind you, going back to the 52 flavors or whatever, each of these flavors had different price points, depending on, uh, I guess, the complexity of the of the flavor, right? right? So a butter a butter flavor, it's a lot cheaper than a um, caramel drizzle chocolate, whatever. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that adds a lot of more weight. And anyways, um, so we. Early on, not early on, but I guess towards the the ending of of designing this website, we figured out that this is almost impossible to do in in Squarespace. Um, But we still said, okay, let's try and figure it out. Um, I think we, the calculations that we made, uh, there was possible combinations of up to like 30 or 90,000 it was like 30 uh, something thousand combinations yeah combinations po- that are possible with what I, what I just said right so at some point we were like contemplating like okay the, let, let's create all these combinations oh in the vacuum like if we do so space. many per day like for eight hours a day <laughs> if we knocked out like this many of them we could make it make it. yeah it it was it was really really hard um Obviously, the biggest, some of the biggest things is one, we didn't really do a, a good scope of work during the beginning of this What's project. That? Yeah. What's the scope <laughs> right? of work? Uh, we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into. Um, obviously, that being part of the process that we've actually, you know, we've changed has helped us, you know, mitigate this exact problem that, that we're having. So, at some point during this, we were, I was contacting my brother. I was calling my brother because my brother has uh, a lot more experience with coding and, and, and doing all this stuff. He's actually 
I guess the person that I looked up to when we were younger. And that's why I know all that I know with Photoshop and Illustrator um, and the coding that I know is because of my brother. And I looked up to him and he taught me um, a lot of these things. So whenever I came to this problem, I was like, look, I need help with this. (laughs) Uh, And he, I mean, he was awesome. He helped us a lot um, and we figured out a solution. Um, But it took us, I mean, tons and tons of research uh just looking for a solution and something that was remotely possible um and even even us saying okay yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna we have to make this work somehow um the solution that we came up with wasn't even the best solution no not at Uh, all (laughs) we we sort of uh butchered her her pricing structure and had to change different things in order to make it work for Squarespace. Um, so the solution was not the best solution at all um, for her store, um, but we had a, a solution in place. I think that one of the calls that I had with her was about three fourths of the way through the website, and we had just figured out how to like, like if you can imagine, it's just like a really small button to where they could click on it and like you can definitely tell that it's not native to the site where they could click down and like actually add a different type of 10 and she was like well it looks like it's starting to come but like do you guys want to just uh chop it all up and just go towards something like shopify or whatever else and we at the time we were like we we can't because we didn't know shopify we'd have to learn something else i think at this time if we didn't track the hours so let's just say that we were just doing it um but we probably, you know, Christian alone probably put in a couple hundred hours. And then the amount of time that I put in it probably, I mean, it's probably 250, 300 hours for this one website. And for us to be able to just say, like, we're going to scrap it and move on, uh, we wasn't possible. So we kind of pushed forward and we built the site. It was functional. She got sales. Um, so she was selling things. They didn't sell a bunch of tens and there was definitely issues for it. But, um, I guess my point for this is uh, we can tell you about the the happy ending later, but I think from all of that, I remember many calls and many like strategy sessions. And I even remember, and Christian probably may not remember this, but I remember saying like, okay, if we can figure out a solution for this, we can do pretty much anything in business because at the time it was like the hardest thing ever. Like we were staying up late. We were getting up early. We were trying to figure out how to make this work. Like we said, I remember texting Christian's, um, Christian telling me texting his brother and I remember one night it was like 9 or 10 o'clock at night he's like dude I think my brother figured out a way we can do this and I'm like <laughs> oh my gosh I think it was like the best night's sleep I had gotten in like months because we found a solution I mean we kept trying Christian tr- kept trying to learn like CSS or which is like a, a fancy way to like style a website he tried to learn different types of code talking to his brother we tried to work with Carol on like reducing the amount of uh, products potentially, or like different, um, you know, options, I guess with her products. So like there was a bunch of different things that we were trying. I don't think she ever ended up budging on the products or the solutions. I think she even threw us for a loop by adding new pricing. Like they were upping their pricing at the time. Um, but I don't, I don't think the solution or the issue, um, or I guess the, uh, the resolution here was not necessarily that we built the best website for her. Um, because we've built much better websites and we've built her a new website. So I will say that now, but what it did teach us is to persevere, um, and find a solution that there's always a way it's may not be exactly what we were thinking. Like, it's not like, I think we envisioned it was like, this is going to be an easy website. Christian's going to spend like 10 hours or whatever. Um, and we're going to all just design the website. It's going to add these products. It's super easy. We're just going to build it. And then we're going to be done. Like, then we'll go do another one. And, I think, you know, five or 10 hours into it, we realized, oh, dang, we're climbing Mount Everest and we thought we were going over a hill, but it did teach us a lot in business, which was we didn't have a process. Um, Obviously, I shouldn't have been designing any type of website at all. Um, We didn't have any type of time tracking, so we didn't know if we were doing it correctly. We didn't have, like Christian said, a scope of work. Like, what do you mean? Like, what are we going to do for this project or what what are we charging it for? Um, we, our proposals, um, I'm looking back at that tent now is like, 
our proposals didn't outline exactly what was happening. It just kind of said like, this is how much. And then this is what you're going to get, which is like a finished website. So it's like they signed a contract to get this website. So it's like, we owe them that website. Um, but there's just so many things that I think that we would have went down the wrong path if we wouldn't have went through the struggle of those tins very early on in the company, only because it was like not just a little hurdle. It was a big hurdle like that stretched us not only in the tin world, but also in our processes and trying to work remotely with you and I doing FaceTime and trying to communicate. Um, so just the communication aspect of things too. Um, so like all those struggles and all those quote unquote failures really pushed our company forward to find other solutions. Yeah. And I think the, our mentality early on was we just need to make money. Right. right? We, we could have, we could have taken the route of the first year of our quote unquote business, just figuring out processes, figuring out this, figuring out that. And then when we were ready and we had all this stuff in place, then we started to sell. Yeah. Um, we could have taken that approach, but we took an er early approach of saying, let's just sell this. Let's Mm -hmm. sell whatever. Let's go ahead and get out there and make some money. Then we'll figure out what to do (laughs) once we get those projects. Um, I mean, looking back, I think obviously it pushed us to, to make all these things happen. Um, and obviously we've been profitable since day one, right? right? We've, we've been making money since day one. Um, we haven't had any debt. We haven't had any of that stuff. So I would say, yes, this, this, this journey or this path that we took has definitely been, uh, hard, but at the same time, it's been successful because of all these failures that we've had. So yeah, this one thing that we did at the very, very beginning has sort of, sprinkle or you know grown into all these different paths and different things that um we've implemented in our business because of these failures right Mm -hmm. um i feel like if we would have taken on a single website early on and everything went fine and dandy uh, i think we would have kept doing the same thing over and over keep using Um, squarespace yeah until we failed right i think that that's the whole point of this is like you're eventually going to fail and that's what's going to lead you to seek out better solutions, seek out ways to, for you to grow. And we don't use Squarespace anymore. No, (laughs) the, the, that I think that the over overarching uh, learning uh, nugget here is that we said for the type of websites that our clients want and need Squarespace is not the right solution for us. Um, From that, we've moved on to Webflow uh, we actually moved on to Shopify, mm-hmm. um, and we've even done some stuff with uh, WordPress. Very limited, but we've done some stuff with WordPress. Um, so we found a solution that actually worked for us, which Webflow uh, has been amazing because we can just design it how we want it, how we envision it, uh, and actually make it happen. It looks nice. Um, we don't have to worry about any other limitations that we had on on Squarespace. And actually, you have all the freedom of designing what, exactly what the client wants. Um, so that's one of the biggest things uh, that we learned from this is, one, you have to have the right tools. Uh, two, you have to have the, have the, have the right processes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have to know you know, exactly what the client wants and be able to deliver on it early on, right? Yeah. Not agree to something and then try to figure it out. Yeah. And I think there's... You know, early on, you could probably get away with a little bit of that, but it's just, it's a lot harder that way. But I think one of the other things is that it proved to us that we could do it, but that there was less friction if we figured out a solution. Like, um, you know, we finally created a program or for ourselves anyway, of like exact process of how to generate those leads and exactly how to qualify leads and convert them, et cetera. So it took us time to go through this. To realize like, okay, how many times do we have to hit our heads over the wall and just say like, okay, there is a better way to do it. But I think failing in the beginning proved to us that we could get through it. Um, So it's not like we couldn't, but why work harder on this when we could find a solution? So it it pushed us to find the solution, which eventually made us, um, you know, getting us to a position we're at now, which I'm sure we're going to run into 
problems and failures. Now they're going to push us to that next level. But I truly believe that we wouldn't have created our program like that leads accelerator program for local business owners to like help them generate leads. We wouldn't be able to teach them processes. We wouldn't be able to have a system in place. We wouldn't be able to do any of that um, had we not went through our show, through it ourselves. So I think that's the one of the biggest things is like now we can explain it better and we have it in place for ourselves so we can teach it better and nobody else has to make the same mistakes as we did because, uh, hey, look, we learned early on and it, there's no reason anybody should ever have to build a, a popcorn website like we did. <laughs> yeah. You know, now that I think back on it, those first few projects were some of the hardest projects to take on. We took on websites that both of them were e-commerce websites. So mm-hmm. our very first projects were e-commerce websites, which are leaps and bounds way more complex than just building an informational couple pages uh, website for, let's say, I don't know, a lawyer, right? Which we did build uh, that one too. But yeah, we did. Later. <laughs> right. But the, yeah, those first two were very hard projects to to start with and to be honest we didn't even know we didn't even know that there were going to be a harder project than, than doing a, a a more static marketing website yeah they, they i think they touted like squarespace touted like you know super easy designs and like templates or whatever and like you can sell your products in minutes and so we're like ah, well we'll do our own little design and we'll be able to do it in minutes and you know not 200 hours later uh, figuring that out, yeah. which was, oh, that was rough. Um, and I think, it, I don't know if it necessarily worked for you, but I'm sure that like a lot of people can probably relate to, um, like your parents. I didn't necessarily have this issue as much as, um, uh, Christians. Like they were definitely more like afraid of like, what are you guys doing? And looking back now, it's like, okay, so we had just closed these two websites and we'd ran into these problems with these websites and we're trying to figure out how to make it work. I think at this time we were still, I think we had just quit our jobs. And so our parents are like worried about us. Like you're going out there, you're trying to do this. And then we run into more problems. But then I don't know if they necessarily um, were more okay with it. But at least if they knew that we went through the struggle and we overcame it, it's more of like just a little notch of confidence that like, okay, if they were going to fail at it right now, you know, that's a big kind of roadblock and they, they overcame that and they figured it out. So it's like, um, I think that also gave, at least for me, more confidence to tell more people that, oh yeah, we can do this. Like we have a business, we are going to be successful. If we've been through this, then I know that we can run into whatever else it may be. Even if the other things like a harder, um, obstacle, it's like, we've been through hard times. So because we've been through hard times, it's not going to be um, as difficult as if we were just like fresh, you know, starting the company. All right. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this episode. It was kind of fun for us to recap what happened in the business early on. And like I said, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about these stories. Um, but I think one of the biggest things to take away from this is that you should not believe that success builds success, but really that the failures that you have that you have will actually ultimately push you towards more success. And when you do that, then you come over, overcome those obstacles. It's going to make you stronger in your business. And for us, it was more so figuring out those processes and procedures and, um, creating systems and figuring out a way to automate part of our business, which is where we're at now. Uh, and that's would have never been possible if we wouldn't have failed previously. So, I encourage you, like if you're going through a a rough time right now, or if you're going through something like, you know, a world pandemic, like we all are going through right now, if you're listening to this in uh, May of 2020, or even any time before that, uh, in March, we we're going through this. So it's a struggling time, but it's an, uh, an opportunity for you to become tougher and find ways to be, uh, more growth oriented in your business or find ways to overcome those in your business. Absolutely. Seek failure. Seek failure. We We're not seek failure, but embrace it. Embrace it. Is that what they, they say? Seek failure or they say embrace failure? What did they say? The what? Those guys? Oh, no. They said... Oh, no. Seek discomfort. Do you seek discomfort? Okay. So we'll just do our own little version of theirs. <laughs> like embrace. Whatever. All right. 
Awesome. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, if you've gotten this far into it and you are trying to figure out the processes and procedures and systems in your business, your, uh, your local business to generate more leads online, especially as we go through a pandemic and you're trying to take your offline business online, I'd encourage you to go do a 45 minute free strategy session. We're doing those right now, um, to help people figure out the three pillars that they need to have in their business to generate more leads consistently so that they can spend more time with their families and don't have to worry about whether or not a pandemic is going on to continue to grow their business. Um, You can schedule your free 45-minute strategy session by going to apply.bitbranding.co. Again, that's apply.bitbranding.co. And if this is your first time listening, please make sure that you hit subscribe because that is how um, we grow. Uh, but more importantly, tell you don't miss out on every episode that happens on Mondays when we drop a new episode. Um, you could also, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell so you get notified as well. And again, back for you podcast people, almost forgot, make sure that you leave us an honest rating and review if you've been listening for a while. This is how the podcast grow, grows. Apple Podcasts especially, they love the reviews. The more reviews we have, the more people we can reach, the more impact we can have. Um, So we'd greatly appreciate it if you went over to Apple iTunes um, or Apple Podcasts rather and left us an honest rating review. It helps us. And if you enjoyed this episode, please screenshot it. We had somebody do this for the first time a couple of weeks ago, which was awesome. Um, Screenshot this episode and then tag us on Instagram and let us know what you thought about this episode. It's really, uh, really helpful for us. Everything he said, yes, absolutely. Do all that. The Marketing Natives Podcast is a production of Bit Branding.